let's see how to solve a differential equation using Euler's method and a spreadsheet. And to make that spreadsheet I'll be using my graphical calculator, which is a TI Inspire CX, but I will say regardless of where you make your spreadsheet, on a calculator or elsewhere, the method you'll be seeing here will always work. So let's see, we're told, consider the differential equation dy dx which equals to y minus x squared plus 1, and y of 0 equals to 0 0.5. In other words, when x equals to 0, y is equal to 0 0.5. We're then told, use Euler's method with step size h which equals to 0 0.1 to approximate y when x equals to 0 0.5. Okay, well as I often do, let me write s o l for solution, and I'll start by reminding us of the recursive formula we have for Euler's method. Those are x sub n plus 1, which equals to x sub n plus the step size h, and y sub n plus 1, which equals to y sub n plus the step size h, times dy dx evaluated at, evaluated at the point x sub n, y sub n. And I'll go ahead and box that formula. There we go. And I will say, if you're an IB mathematics student, then in your formula booklet, instead of writing dy dx evaluated at x sub n, y sub n, you'll find h times f evaluated at x sub n, y sub n. So do keep in mind that that function f is referring to the derivative. That being said, I carry on. The whole idea behind these formula is that they allow us to start from the initial condition we have up here, which we could actually write as a point, 0 and 0 0.5, and work our way up to x equals to 0 0.5, which we'll get thanks to this formula, and the corresponding value of y, which we'll find thanks to the second formula we have here, and which will be the approximate value of y we're trying to find. And provided we have the initial condition we have here, the step size which we have right here, as well as the actual differential equation, all we need to do this is a spreadsheet. And so moving over to my calculator, which you can see on the screen now, indeed I'm on the home page of my TI Inspire CX, the first thing I need to do is open up a spreadsheet. And for that, I go under the Documents tab, or Documents title, and I click on New. I then select the fourth option, Add Lists and Spreadsheet, and so I click on that. Okay, now before diving in and entering things onto the spreadsheet, on the paper I have here, so you can imagine this is my exam paper, I want to make things crystal clear for the examiner who'll be grading my work. And so looking at the spreadsheet, we can see that each column is named A, B, C, D, and so on, and the rows, of course, are labeled 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. And so on my paper, I'd make a copy of that, so I'll make some columns, and some rows. And I'll label them at the top here, so I've got A, B, C, D, and I'll number my rows as 1, 2, 3, three, and so on. Notice here that I left this row blank because I'm comparing it to the gray row that I have on my calculator, in which I'll add titles to each of my columns. And here's how I would set things up. In column A, I'll go ahead and write N, where the N we have here refers to the subscript we can see on X and Y, and although it's not mandatory, I like to make sure I have this column because it tells us how many steps we took to get to our approximate solution. In the next column, column B, that will be for x sub n, column C will be for y sub n, and last but not least, column D, well, that will be for dy dx evaluated at x sub n, y sub n. And so I'll just write dy dx here. Okay, and I'll already type that on my calculator, just to make sure I have the same thing as what I wrote on paper. So this column A is n, column B we said was x sub n, so I'll just write x n. Column C is y sub n, so I'll just write y n. And column D is for dy dx, so I'll just write dy dx. Okay, now back to my paper. For the first row we have here, we're going to be writing down our initial conditions. And for the initial conditions, n is equal to 0. Indeed, we haven't made any steps towards the solution yet. For x sub n and y sub n, remember, the initial conditions were that y of 0 is equal to 0 0.5. In other words, the solution curve passes through the point with coordinates 0, 0 0.5. So the initial x value is 0, and the initial y value is 0 
and on my calculator, I can go ahead and type all of that as well. So the initial value for n is zero, the initial value for x is zero as well, and the initial value of y is 0 0.5. Okay, now for the value of dy dx evaluated at the initial point. Well, for that, we're gonna use the differential equation we were given in the question, and more specifically, we'll use the expression we have on the right-hand side here. So y minus x squared plus one. Indeed, using this expression, we can evaluate dy dx at the point 0, 0 0.5 by replacing the y we have here by 0 0.5 and the x we have here by zero. But rather than just typing in those numbers, it's important at this stage to teach our spreadsheet how to calculate dy dx for the x value given two columns to the left of that and for the y value given one column to the left of that. And so what we'll actually type in this cell is well, we'll need to type equals to, we have y minus x squared, and the y value is in column C, row one. So I'll type C one minus the x squared we have here. So that will be the value inside the cell B one. So minus B one squared. And I'll quickly write that B one squared. And of course we add one to all of that. So I write a plus one here. Okay, so now I can actually type that in my spreadsheet on my calculator. And so I type equals to C1 minus B1 raised to the power of two, so plus one. And I can check that I've typed things correctly in the formula bar at the bottom of the spreadsheet. And I have, and so I click on enter, done. And we can see that dy dx evaluated at 0, 0 0.5 is 1.5. Okay, now thanks to the fact that we typed this, all we'll have to do for the column D, so dy dx, is click and drag this formula to the bottom of our spreadsheet. And so now what we need to do is teach our spreadsheet how to get from the initial value of x to the next one, as well as from the initial value of y to the next one. And we'll start with the x column here. Well, thanks to the recursive formula we have for x, we know that to get from any one value of x to the next, all we have to do is add the step size h. And here the step size is equal to 0 0.1 that was given to us in the question. So in the cell B2 here, we'll go ahead and type that that's equal to the value in the cell directly above it. So that's B1 plus the step size 0 0.1. So here's exactly what I'll type. I'll type B1 plus 0 0.1. And so I go ahead on my calculator and type that as well. So again, I type that's equal to the cell that's above it. So B1 plus the step size 0 0.1. And I click on enter. And of course the value we get in this cell is equal to 0 0.1. Okay, that's this column taken care of now. All we'll have to do in a minute is click and drag this cell down to the bottom of our spreadsheet. But before doing that, now we need to enter the recursive formula for the next y value. And so for that, we're gonna use the second formula we have here which tells us that to get from one y value to the next, we need to take that y value, so y sub n, and add to that the step size multiplied by the derivative dy dx evaluated at x sub n, y sub n. So in the context of our spreadsheet here, what that tells us is that to find the next y value, we'll need to take the previous y value, so 0 0.5, that's the one in the row above it, add to that, the step size times the derivative evaluated on the previous row. So that would be this derivative here. And so if I write that on the far right hand side here, because this is quite important, in this cell, I'll go ahead and type that that's equal to, so the y value that's above it, so that's in the cell C1, so I type C1, plus the step size, which remember was 0 0.1, so plus 0 0.1 times the derivative evaluated at the previous values of x and y. And so that's the derivative value we can find in the column D, row one. So this will be 0 0.1 times D1. And so now that I've established that on paper, I go back to my spreadsheet and I type exactly what I just wrote. So in this cell, I'll type that that's equal to C1 plus 0 0.1 times D1. And I check what I've typed and I'm happy with that. And so I click on enter, done. We can see that the next value of y is 0 
Okay, we're nearly ready to click and drag the whole thing here, but before doing that, let me quickly add a formula to get from one value of n to the next, and hopefully it's clear all we'll have to do to get from step number 0 to 1 to 2 to 3 is add 1 each time. And so in that cell on my spreadsheet, I'll go right ahead and type that that's equal to the cell that's above it, so that will be a1 plus 1. And I click on enter. And so of course this will be 1, 2, and it will carry on that way. And I'll just write three dots. There we go. Okay, now at this stage we've written all of the recursive formula we need in our spreadsheet. And all that's actually left to do now is click and drag the cells that we have in our spreadsheet down to the bottom of our table. And so remember, we want to figure out what y is approximately equal to when x is equal to 0 0.5. So if I go in the x column first of all, so that's column B on my spreadsheet, to click and drag this downwards until we reach 0 0.5, I could hover down into the lower right hand corner of the cell and try to click and drag it with the trackpad on my calculator, but I personally find that a bit tedious with this calculator. So instead of doing it that way, there's a nice trick. With that cell selected, all I have to do is click on Control, followed by the central button on the main trackpad. So if I click on that, and then I can just move downwards. So remember, we need to get to 0 0.5. So the next one will be 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and 0 0.5. And once I'm ready, I click on Enter. Done. That's the X column taken care of. While I'm at it, I'll also take care of the N column. And so again, I place myself in the cell and I click on control, the central part of the trackpad, and I move downwards to the bottom of the table. And once I'm there, I click on enter. Notice here that this column N, which I personally like to add, tells us that it takes five steps for us to get to our approximate solution. I carry on, and so back at the top of my table here, I'll click and drag the Y column that we have. And so again, I place myself in that cell, I click on control, followed by the middle button on the trackpad, and I just click downwards. There we go, once I reach the bottom of the table, I click on enter. And at first you'll see that it has these blank values here. Don't let that worry you, that's because for each Y value, the formula we wrote here calls upon the value which is in column D, but in the row above it. So for the next Y value, it's looking for a value which is in cell D2. And for the moment, there's nothing there. And so to make sure that there is, if I place myself in column D, in the cell where we have 1.5, that was dy dx evaluated at the initial value, all I have to do now is click and drag that to the row before last of our table. And so again, I click on control, followed by the central button on the trackpad, and I move downwards. And once I've reached the row before last, I click on enter. And we're done. You can now see that the last y value we get when x equals to 0 0.5 is 1.38369. And so in an exam, the way I would actually present my results, well, I would definitely show my spreadsheet the way I have here, but I wouldn't copy the entire table. And in fact, what I'll probably do right now is erase this row here, just to make it clear what I would actually do. There we go. And here in my table, I would probably write three dots vertically, three dots, three dots, just to say that it carries on this way. I would write the value of the derivative that goes here, so on my spreadsheet, that's this value, 1.64. So I would copy that, 1.64. And then I'd add one last row to my spreadsheet. There we go. And I would copy the last row of the table that we have. So that is when n equals to 5, x would be 0 0.5. And rounding to three significant figures, y would be equal to 1.38. And so this 1.38 would be the solution that we're after. And I suppose we could state something along the lines of when x equals to 0 0.5, y is approximately equal to 1.38. Done. And there we go. Hopefully that helps a bit in understanding how to run Euler's method in a spreadsheet using our graphical calculator.